Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome to another speed reviews video for the month of April. We seem to do this series about every other month on this channel and uh, hey consistently I wear my favorite wig for it. Today's video has a little bit of everything. We have some high-end makeup, we have some drugstore makeup, we have Korean skincare, Canadian skincare, and as always, there are timestamps and links in the description box below so you can watch whatever interests you and skip whatever doesn't. I will affiliate whatever I can, some products I can, some products I can't, but let's go ahead and get into it. We have a lot to cover. Okay, I am absolutely dying to start with makeup because I want so badly to tell you about my experience with the Hindash Botopsy. I've never said this out loud. Botopsy? Or is it be autopsy? Now that I've done a good job of disturbing myself, let me tell you about this palette. Now it might surprise you that I have the first one as they just came out with a new palette. I forget the name of it. What happened is as I saw people talking about the new palette, it reminded me that I want to buy the old one. And this is a case where I was actually influenced into buying this by Samantha Ravindahl. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's really funny that I would say it's Samantha Ravindahl who influenced me here because her personality isn't one of those over the top, oh my gosh, this is the best product ever, you have to buy it, right? It's just that the way I could tell she was loving this palette in her review made me want it. The principle of this palette is you get what looks like six pans, but it's supposed to be 12 shades. So tan and lines here, wet and paint here, and you're getting this gradient effect. And I was thinking, yeah, I can see the potential because I do like to play with, in particular, the shadows involved with matte formulas. So I, I finally went for it, I finally bought it, and I bought it as an eyeshadow palette. I know it can be used on the face, but I was thinking I wanna use it as an eyeshadow palette. Now here's where it gets tricky. The reality is, the first few times I used this, I was actually a little whelmed. So I had to, you know, analyze what was I doing. Well, I was pairing these with some other kind of shimmer to create a full eye look, and it was just all right. So I have to be honest with you all that for a while, I was kind of meh about this palette. And then I had an epiphany. I tried an all mattes look an all matte, incredibly basic look, but just doing what I bought this to, playing with the shadows involved in creating an eye shape. I'm wearing that look again today. I, um, I love it. <laughs> it's so simple, you know, I'm somebody who's worn so many bright colors of eyeshadow in my life, and yet this is, it's a pretty look, and it's not difficult to do. These are beautiful eyeshadows that really blend themselves. So, you know, it's practically wedding makeup, right? And whoa, it is beautiful for that purpose. The other thing is I finally tried the pink shade as a blush, which I'm also wearing today, and that is gorgeous. It is amazing how uh, pretty it is on your skin. And I know that Hindash was talking about this. He created this to be both an eye and a face palette. And to just be honest with you, in some ways, I think it's almost better as a face palette because of how uh, much this reduces texture, how uh, beautifully it adheres to your skin. So to sum it all up, I feel like my experience with this palette went from, uh, you know, this initial excitement to this drop of, oh, it's not quite what I thought it would be, to figuring out what it was and loving it. It's interesting though, that does mean I don't know if I'll buy the new one, the, the next, what's it called? I'll put it on the screen. I don't know if I'll buy that one because now that I know I like this as a very barely there makeup product, I don't know if I need that one. I also bought a new release from Bobbi Brown. This is the Skin Corrector Stick in the shade Extra Light Bisque, the lightest shade I could find. Uh, it's really well done. It's really well done. The funny thing is, for the first few times I used this, I kept thinking that it was uh, the a standard liquid concealer, so I kept pulling this part off and trying to use this. <laughs> the product is in here, it's a twist up. I really felt like a genius sitting over here going, Years ago, I bought the Bobbi Brown version of this in the pot. You all remember that? It's such a classic product at this point. But I didn't buy it in quite the right shade. I think the funny thing for me with color correcting is I, I think that most of the products on the market at least five years ago were for medium skin tones. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you all remember that time when the makeup industry really catered towards light, light to medium, light to medium skin tones. And so I was walking around with all these color correctors on my face that were not correcting anything, they were creating new problems. I'm just being honest with you, that is absolutely what used to happen. So I bought the right shade this time. This is very light, but it does actually cancel out under eye circles. Now I've been dealing with a few of those because I have 
uh, a surgery coming up that by the time you all watch this video will be over. Don't worry, it's overall minor. It's a dental surgery. Love it. Love, we love our dental surgeries. But yeah, could be sleeping better. Could be sleeping better. So, turns out I'm glad I bought this. And yeah, it does a great job of color correcting. I'm gonna talk later in this video about eye creams that also color correct. This is a product that I think is for under makeup. Yeah, it's really interesting. There definitely is some kind of a textural difference that I'm not sure I can put into words. But eye creams that color correct, they work on their own. I feel like when you put foundation on over them, it's not enough. And this on its own, it will definitely look like makeup if you're not pairing foundation with it. So it's an odd situation where you may not need to buy products like this and eye creams that color correct unless you're somebody who consistently wears makeup some days and wears zero makeup on other days. So yeah, this is for pairing with makeup. And then a quick update for you all, uh, the Merit Signature Lipsticks that I obviously cannot stop talking about. I bought Lavenue. I'm wearing it right now, mm, it's gorgeous. I love these lipsticks so much. I know I have a review of those somewhere, I'll link it for you if you wanna see it. The other two that I originally got in PR. Let's move on to some ColourPop. Oh my gosh, this channel never has ColourPop on it, now does it? It's, <laughs> do you wanna know the reason? I think I've said this, but it's been a while since I've told you all, so. I like ColourPop, I do. I just noticed years ago that they started to make a lot of products and because I kind of can easily end up with a collect them all mentality, I, I, I put a, a hard stop on myself. I said, okay, we have to stop buying ColourPop palettes or we're gonna probably end up with 150 ColourPop eyeshadow palettes. Who was right? Oh. Who was right? So this is my first ColourPop order in probably about three years. And I bought it through Ulta, so you all may remember this Platinum Perks Day. So I bought the face brush set here. Uh, this is a really pretty face brush set. You have these, it's this light pink color, what is that, millennial pink? And then you have your rose gold handles. The white bristles are going to stain a little bit. These are clean brushes, but... It, it does stain. I no longer have the packaging, so I don't remember what they said these brushes were supposed to be used for, but of course you know you can use brushes whatever works best for you, whatever way works best. So the F18 here, I think it's an okay powder brush. I find that I prefer smaller face brushes in general, but it is nice for just a, a quick dusting of face powder. The F21 is a good angled brush. It's a little floppy, but it works for a light blush application. I like the F20 for adding contour. The fan brush is such a surprise to see. I feel like fan brushes had a moment and then everyone forgot about them. But it is nice to apply really light highlighter with these. And probably my most used brush in here, the F33. I think they say this is for concealer, but it's nice for setting under your eye or for anywhere that you, you know, it's hard to reach with your bigger face brushes. So $18 at Alto, you can use the 350 off coupon. Yeah, it's worth it for under $15. I like that brush set. The freebies that I got with that, I'm a little more on the fence about. We have the Hyaluronic Acid Setting Mist. This is really scented to me. Again, my preferences have changed with scent, so it's actually hilarious if I break this down. There was a company many years ago by the name of Gerard Cosmetics that nobody talks about anymore. There was a scandal with that company. Basically what happened is there was a video circulating of the owner saying a drama channel was ugly. I think it's really funny because the, uh, the owner herself has said that she wasn't referring to their appearance. She meant that what they were saying about the brand was ugly. And I think that's pretty, it's pretty possible that it was taken out of context. I don't use that phrase myself, but I, I know plenty of people who do say, mm, that opinion is ugly. Yeah, I, I do know people who say that. So anyway, regardless, the company just in popularity. <laughs> You all followed that, you all followed that. So uh, yeah, nobody talks about them anymore, but they had this incredible smelling coconut setting spray. I used to buy it for the smell. Again, this was before I kind of was admitting to myself that I have a more sensitive skin type, so I bought it for the smell. And uh, I had to learn over a couple of years to appreciate fragrance-free skincare products and makeup products. So I wouldn't buy this anymore, again, I got it free with my order, because now it's so scented that my brain goes, uh-oh, uh, th please tell me somebody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, so they say it's made with coconut and hyaluronic acid, and I mean, I've got those in so many other products, but it smells nice, you know? Maybe you wanna, shoot, you could probably use this. 
You could use this as a body mist. And maybe I will because that smell does smell amazing. I like coconut scents a lot. And then the Pretty Fresh Pressed Face Powder. I don't know why I was tripping up so much over those words there. <laughs> pretty Fresh Pressed Face Powder. It's too many P's and F's. It's, it's, it's all P's and F's. It's, it's too much. It's too much. So again, this was a Platinum Perks Day freebie. You pick your shade, add it to your cart, and it would go free. The thing is, I took so long figuring out which shade to buy, and I still don't think I got quite the right one. I got Fair One. Uh, why, why is it in the year 2022, why would you go to buy a foundation and look through ColourPop's own website and they're not clearly indicating the undertone of this? How? Every foundation shade should say either cool, neutral, warm, olive. Why would that be an oversight? Anyway, I settled on Fair One because it seemed they were suggesting this for neutral and cool. And uh, I'm not warm, I'm olive. So I thought, you know, let's go with neutral. It's probably neutral, but a little too light. I think it's too light for me. Now, I will tell you, it says it is a foundation or a touch-up powder as a foundation on my dry skin. <laughs> it's not good. Not good. I don't want to sound like I'm being hard on this product, though, because the reality is that's pretty much every powder foundation on my dry skin. When I put this on my skin, it was just breaking up immediately all around my nose area. It looked so bad. I wish I had, video, had a video of it, but also I kind of am glad I don't. <laughs> If you have dry skin, I mean, you know. You know what powder foundation can look like. The one incredible exception being that Jane Iredale powder. Oh, it's so good, but it's so expensive. Anyway, so that didn't work. Had to wash everything off, redo the whole skincare routine, and start over. Uh, however, as a touch-up powder, you know, I, I used it just under my eyes today. In isolated areas, it's fine. It may be wonderful if you have an oily skin type, uh, you know, the things that I don't love about it as someone with dry skin. That may be music to your ears if you have oily skin, and it is cute, you know? It, it's a cute product. I just am perplexed by the shade range. I'm, I'm perplexed by the lack of information about the shade range. Let's move into the skincare section, and my first brand is actually a Canadian brand made in Canada. Oh... I am so excited about this. This company reached out to me, and I'm telling you, after looking at their formulas, I knew I really wanted to try them. This is Bow Laboratory. And now that I've tried these products, what I'm gonna tell you is this is a brand that truly does not have any kind of hidden scent ingredients. You know, the fragrance conversation is, it, it's such a complicated one, I feel like, People just look for the word fragrance, and yet I would argue that a lot of ingredients contain fragrance, and then fragrance as a category, you could argue there's benefits to certain fragrant molecules, like vanilla is a scent ingredient. It also is an antioxidant ingredient. So it, it's just, it's so much more nuanced of a conversation. But regardless, I know that some amount of people do better without fragrance. There's a catch with that that does mean that these smell like skincare products. I'll do my best to explain what that means. But yeah, this is, this is real fragrance free, real to the point also. So I'm super excited about sharing these. Let's start with Endymion's Luminous Sea. You know I'm not gonna trip over that word, right? Nobody from New Orleans would ever trip over that word. What a brilliant system. What they do is they give you three bottles that are 15 milliliters each containing all of these different forms of vitamin C. 15% vitamin C comprised of 11 types of vitamin C. We recently did the organic chemistry behind vitamin C on this channel, so you know it's a really interesting approach in that with this product you're applying L-ascorbic acid to your skin, which is immediately bioavailable, right? And then you have all of these other forms which would be slowly converting in your skin. So it's like you're getting kind of a time release of the benefits of L-ascorbic acid. You're also getting some ceramides in here, glutathione, polyglutamic acid, panthenol, tranexamic acid. And again, you know, there's nothing in here that is extraneous. There's, there's nothing in this formula that's extraneous. So let me tell you about the scent. You know how a lot of vitamin C products kind of smell like hot dog water? Like you took a, a, a Winn-Dixie hot dog, put it in water, shook up the water, and then you're like, here, apply this water to your skin. This instead, it smells like sausage water. 
it's so much more rich smelling. It's so much more going on to it than just your L ascorbic water. <laughs> but let me tell you, my skin has responded so well to this. Let me show you the color of it. Look at that. Look at that. It's clear. It is fully clear. Good job. You know it's fresh. Again, I emphasize this is for people who don't want anything extraneous in your skincare. You've got to be okay with sausage water in this case. <laughs> They did send me more products. Actually, I want to talk about the eye serums. I had someone ask me a question the other day and uh, I recommended them an eye serum. Here's the deal. So I, as someone with dry skin, I do occasionally get kind of these dry patches and when they happen around my eye area, it's really difficult to treat them. So while I don't think everybody in the world needs an eye serum in addition to an eye cream, it's actually been really helpful for me in managing my eye area. So they have two options here. We'll start with the, uh, the Intuition Eye Serum. I find that I prefer this one as a night eye serum. Can you see how uh, viscous this one is? It's really beautiful though, really hydrating. I'm guessing from the formula, it's probably pretty high in hyaluronic acid. It doesn't have too much of a smell, but maybe that's because it does have some extract ingredients. It has some cucumber, some raspberry, oh, excuse me, rosemary, raspberry. Where'd I get that from? Rosemary. And the Persephone eye serum oil is maybe even more unique. It might be more unique. It's primarily Sacha Inchi oil with some squalane in it. So it does feel pretty lightweight. And I was kind of worried it would drip into my eyes, but it doesn't. It stays wherever you apply it. And yet, yeah, it does feel like an oil-based serum. It's just so interesting because I don't think I've ever used oils around my eye area, but that one absorbs so quickly that it actually, it does feel like a very uh, hydrating and emollient eye product, which is very rare to find. Uh, there's two more products, the Lotus Squalane Healing Face Oil. This one really surprised me. It has a high lotus content to it, as you may guess from the name. And I'm telling you, lotus is one of those ingredients that I'd like to do a deep dive into. I think it is an incredible ingredient. And finally, the Pro B5 Hyaluronic Acid Full Spectrum Quenching Serum, 50 milliliters. It's a huge bottle. Again, this formula is just incredibly straightforward. It's to the point. There's nothing extraneous in this product. And I do like that they ex explain for you all of the ingredients. So if you're, if you're newer to skincare, you can understand what a product is doing for your skin and why. But I'm pleased. I'm very pleased with this brand. Absolutely uh, a brand that I'd not heard of, but once I looked at those ingredients and then once I tried these products, it's a beautiful brand. How about we do Korean skincare next? This can kind of be our international skincare section. So I bought a very interesting product that I saw on the Style Korean. <laughs> Website. I love that I just put out a video about Style Vana, and yet I'm sitting here telling you I ordered from Style Korean. I'm telling you, it's because I like all of those retailers. All of them. Let me tell you about this product. This is from Zombie Beauty by, get ready for it, Skin1004. And yet, check this out, check this out. Look at this dropper. Y you recognize that shape? That's the same shape in the Skin1004 ampoule. So yeah, it's Skin1004, but it's Zombie Beauty. Anyway, take a look at the name and the appearance of this product and you can probably guess what it is supposed to be similar to. That's right, the Ordinary's Peeling Solution. Okay, so get this, this product contains 17% glycolic acid. Okay, <laughs> I just got like really emotional over that, didn't I? We have all kinds of fruit extracts in this product, some salicylic acid, some gluconolactone niacinamide. Here's the thing. I do not actually like the Ordinary's Peeling Solution for my sensitive skin. It's a bit too much. But I thought this is almost half of that product. In terms of strength, strictly in terms of strength. So I thought, let's give it a go. Let's try it. It was $8 on Style Korean. I thought, I, I, I want to try it, see if it works. And here's a very intriguing detail about this product. It says on here how to use. Use the pipette, drop an appropriate amount on your face, leave on for one minute, then wash your face. So I did. And you know, again, perhaps because I have a more sensitive skin type, that ended up being really ideal for me. I actually liked it. I actually liked it. I could still feel it, you know, kind of that, that slight stinging sensation, but it wasn't too much. It left my face looking really glowy. 
And uh, yeah, it's just fascinating that, you know, different people have different levels of especially active ingredients that we can tolerate. I think 30% just might be too much for me, and yet 17% works. And also that detail of one minute, I think that's really smart. You know, I've seen a lot of people really mess up their skin with the Ordinary's peeling solution, leaving it on for more than the 10 minutes that are recommended. Uh, so definitely, you know, I think one minute is possibly enough. And I think that mostly that just goes to show how strong glycolic acid is as an ingredient. It's very strong. One minute at 17% might be enough to see some mega changes in your skin. And then I bought this from Jumiso, the AC Cure Cover Patch Blemish Care, which is again $1.99 on the Style Korean website. I heard that this was the most invisible pimple patch. So I'm wearing one right now. These are so invisible, and yet they're actually more uh, active in terms of, you know, really helping that pimple to heal than some that I've tried that are much more visible and yet less effective. So these are really well done. Three more skincare products for this video. Let's start with the Rose Ink Eye Revival Brightening Eye Cream. So I did get this in PR. I was happy to get it because I usually like the Rose Ink brand. <laughs> And that may be a hint for how I feel about this product. It might be that case of, I think this is a brand that is great at makeup. The end. Yeah, it's always what happens. I feel like brands are either fantastic at makeup, skincare, or body care, right? This happens all the time. Anyway, this is all to tell you I wasn't too impressed with this product. One problem that I've had with it is that it often, pretty much every time I pump this out, at the very tip of it, there's one of those crusties. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's where you get like this little hard bit to the end and you have to you have to just pick it out. It's frustrating because in an eye cream that is only 0.5 fluid ounces, you're picking out a, a, a quarter, a third of product every time you use it. But the other thing is it's supposed to be a brightening cream. It's got kind of that pink tint to it, but it kind of feels just a little drying. Now again, this could be a case of not ideal for my skin type. Maybe you would love it if you have oily skin. But for me, I feel like I have to buff it in a lot or it's streaky, streak a streaky eye cream. I mean, if you are willing to put in the time and buff it out a lot, it's, it's okay. But that's the thing, it's only okay and it's pretty expensive for an only okay eye cream. I mean, again, I've talked so much about so many Korean eye creams that are incredible and a fraction of the price and bigger packaging that this one is just, it's okay at best for me. It's funny, overall this video is a lot of hits, but I, I think that's, it's just kind of a miss for me. I did buy from Ulta the Origins Ginseng Refreshing Eye Cream to Brighten and Depuff. I bought this for 50% off in the Love Your Skin event. But anyway, I said back in my Love Your Skin event series that I was intrigued by this because I liked the former generation and now they've added vitamin C and niacinamide. The thing is, this is such a better texture for me as opposed to that rose ink product. It's still got that pretty pearlescent. Oh, they have two, uh, two shades now, which is brilliant. So you get two shades, more brightening ingredients, and I love the texture. Again, it's a product I would say buy it 50% off because that sale happens often enough, but it is nice. I feel like it's a, a nice hydrating eye cream that does also brighten, and I'll, I'll make sure to put up on the screen a comparison between using that product and using the Bobbi Brown correcting stick that I was talking about earlier, so you can see the difference. I really do think that this on its own is a brightening product that substitutes for concealer when you're not wearing makeup. And hopefully that can show you why. It doesn't look like makeup, and yet it still does cosmetically brighten. And I like that aspect in eye cream. And then finally, pore cover effects. Poor cover effects. I bought the Future Perfect Water Optional Cleanser, which I actually talked about in a What's New in Skincare when this first came out. This is now 70% off on the Ulta website, and the fact that it still hasn't sold out really, really says it all. It is under $10. Check this out. Look. Oh, that's so fun. It, it's, <laughs> it's so fun. The thing is, they say this is water optional. Um, I actually... Yeah, I like that typically. I do, I talk all the time about using, uh, you know, alternatives to cleanser, right? The thing is, it's a little heavy to use without water. You, you will still feel kind of, for lack of a better description, a heavy sensation on your skin. 
But as a cleanser, it is actually fantastic. I really like it as a, a gentle cleanser. It is not drying, it is not harsh, and I, I like the, the sensation when I rinse with water after using this. There's really not a lot of smell, which is interesting, as it does contain some grapefruit, peel water, some lavender flower water. I guess it's because it, it's the, the water versions of those as opposed to the essential oil. But yeah, geez, the fact that this is 70% off and nobody is buying it, I guess, because it's still there. What a, a way to attest to the fact that Cover FX must have really died from popularity. That is so sad to me. That's really sad. I think it's it's well done. Oh, this is in contrast to my, my thing I just said where I either like makeup or skincare. I actually, I like this, but I'm not sure that I would like the moisturizer. They have a moisturizer as well. I was looking at it and I was just feeling like it probably is fine, but there's nothing about it that's making me want to buy it. And that too is still available at 70% off. But yeah, I would absolutely say if you're curious about this, give it a try before it's gone for that 70% off price. I think it is... It's quite nice. And that's it, my friends. That's it for my April Speed Reviews. I hope you all enjoyed watching today's video. If you did, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you all next time.